Okay, so we are going to look at inequalities in a single triangle now that we've talked about the special segments. And so we've already really talked about this particular inequality. If one side of a triangle is longer than the other side, then the angle opposite the longer side is larger than the angle opposite the shorter side. So for instance, in this triangle, five is longer than the side three. Okay, so the angle across from five, which is angle A, that is gonna be, that angle A is gonna be bigger than the angle across from the three side, C. So we could say the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle C. Okay, and then the converse is also true. So if I know that an angle of a triangle is larger than another angle, then the side opposite that larger angle is larger than the side opposite the smaller angle. Okay, so if I work backwards from there, if 60 is bigger than 40, so the side across from 60, which is FE, that is gonna be larger than the side across from the 40. That would be DF. Okay. Now we could even go further. Since we have the triangle sum theorem, we could find that third angle. 60 plus 40 is 100, so this angle would be 80. And that's bigger than all of them. So that means that this side, DE, is longer than all of them. So I could even put this if I wanted to. So we'll talk about what to call those theorems, but we'll be using those theorems later. So let's look at this ex example. Here's a more complex diagram where we can use these ideas of inequality. So we're going to try to write the lengths of these triangles in ascending order, okay, so from smallest to greatest. So we're going to have to then um, look at the angles. So we're going to try to find all the angles that we possibly can. I'm going to look at this right triangle first. So I've got 50, so that means that this third angle here is 40 degrees. This vertical angle here would be 50 degrees. And then I've got that linear pair, which would make that 130 degrees. Then in this triangle in the middle, it is an isosceles triangle because they've marked that. So I know these two angles down here are going to be congruent. And I only have 50 degrees left for those two angles. So each of them has to be 25 degrees. Then in this third triangle over here, I know that I have 85 degrees and 50 degrees. So that is going to give me a third angle of 45 degrees. Okay, so now that we know all of the angle measures, let's compare the sides. I'm going to use tick marks to help me keep track of which side is bigger than the other. So a single tick mark is going to be smaller than a double tick mark. And I'm going to start over here in the smallest triangle. So in the smallest triangle, I'm going to look at the smallest angle, and that is 40. All right, so 40 is going to be across from AE, so I'll put a single tick mark there. And then 50 is the next highest, so I'm going to use a double tick mark for across from the 50. That would be the next longest side of that triangle. And then the hypotenuse would obviously be the longest side in the right triangle. So I'm going to put three tick marks on the hypotenuse. Okay, so since I've now changed that side to be three tick marks, I'm going to change this side of the isosceles triangle as well. Those each get three tick marks. Now if I'm comparing the sides of the isosceles triangle, the three tick marks are across from the 25 degrees. So the side across from the 130 is obviously way bigger than those. So I'm going to give this side four tick marks for now. Okay, now I'm moving to the small, this other triangle up here, the upper left-hand corner. The smallest angle in that triangle is the 45, and across from it is this three tick mark side. Okay, so that's going to end up being the smallest side of that triangle. The next largest is the 50, so across from the 50, I'm going to go up one tick mark, so I'm going to call that four tick marks. Now. 
I don't intend, I'm, when I put that, I really don't want to intend that that's the same size as this four tick mark down here. So I'm going to put question marks by them because I don't really know which one's bigger at this point. I, all I know is that both of them are bigger than these three tick mark sides. Okay. And then going back to this triangle, 85 is the largest, so I'm going to put five tick marks there, one, two, three, four, five. And again, I'm going to put a question mark because I don't know if that's bigger or smaller than this, than this other uh, four tick mark here. Okay, so now we have to compare the ones with the, with the question marks. So to do that, I'm going to look at the uh, bigger triangle here that contains this one. So look at this triangle now. Okay, so in this triangle, 25 is the smallest, and that's across from the uh, four tick mark over here in the red. Okay, so this one right here is going to be the smallest out of the question mark. So I'm going to keep that a four. Okay, so that means that this one down here has to be bigger than that. Okay, so I'm going to put a five there. So again, my question marks are still between the five. All right, so if we look at this as a whole, this uh, BA side is a lot smaller than the CD side. So that five is going to be smaller than this five. So I'm going to put a six tick mark down here on the CD and I'm going to keep AB as five. So if I write these in ascending order, the smallest segment that I had had that single tick mark, that was AE, and then I had DE, and then the three tick marks, that was both CA or AC and AD. And then the four was BC, the five tick mark was AB, and then the last one was CD. All right, so we put all of those in ascending order, and we are good to go. Okay, so now we need to think about what's possible to even construct a triangle. What are some side lengths that would work and what would not work to make a triangle? All right, so if we consider this, let's um, if, imagine that we had sticks that were this length. So if I were to lay these out, like this would be my eight inches, and then I would have my three inches and my three inches. Would those meet up to be a triangle? And if you think about it, no, because I would have three and three would give me six, and then I would still have this this two inches in the middle that would not be accounted for. Um, and even that, even if I had those two inches, I wouldn't be able to meet up, make it a triangle to have it. So really what we want is we want these sides to be bigger than that bigger side. Okay, so let's look at this one. The longest side here is 11, so if I make this is my 11 inches side. Then I have a nine and then a five. So yeah, nine and five add up to be 14. So they won't be, they won't have that gap and they'll actually have more than 11. So that would make them uh, buckle up like that into a triangle. Okay, well, let's look at this next one, 12, six and six. So if I have my longest side 12, and then I have six and six, what's going to happen is the six and the six, they'll meet up, they'll touch, but they're going to be laying right on top of this 12. So they won't have enough length to actually make a triangle. They're just going to collapse and lay on top of the 12. All right, so when they're exactly the same length, then, yeah, it doesn't work out to be a triangle. And then this last one, what if we have a big old long one, the same size, and then a smaller one. Would that work? Well, yeah, sure, because that's going to help cover the whole, the whole uh, 18 length, the other 18. And then the 6 is going to make it uh, buckle up way off of that. Okay, so, so those are our results from trying to create those triangles. So now let's just generalize those results because it, it would be nice to not have to worry about thinking of a triangle and sticks and all that stuff. 
So that's where the triangle inequality theorem comes in. So let's call this triangle inequality theorem. So if you ever want to use this in a proof, that's what you'll call it. Okay, so the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. And that's what we, really, what we were just talking about. So all three combinations must be true. And remember, when we knew all three sides, then we were really just looking at the longest side being the third side. Okay, because obviously the other two combinations will be bigger than the, a medium size or a small size. Okay, so let's look at this example. If we have two segments with lengths 5 centimeters and 8 centimeters, how many triangles can we form if the third side has to be a whole number? And then how many triangles can we form if the third side can be any positive number? All right, so we've got... Again, we've, let's think of sticks. I've got a 5-centimeter stick and an 8-centimeter stick. Okay, so what are some possibilities for that third side? Well, let's see. That third side, we could have it be the longest side. So if that was the longest side, what's the smallest it could be? So if these were going to collapse on itself, think of the 6, 6, and 12 situation, and this third side was 13, that would not work. So we need it to be bigger than, bigger than 13, not bigger than, smaller than 13. If it was bigger, then it really would match up. Smaller than 13, okay. That's if the third side was the longest. Um, and then, let's see, what if it was the shortest? Okay, if it was the shortest, then 8 would be the longest, right? So if 8 was the shortest, or the longest, and 5 was the medium size, and then how long could this be over here for the smallest size? So at the smallest, it, if it was 3, again, it would collapse on itself, right? So it needs to be bigger than 3. So smaller than 13, greater than 3. Or in other words, add 5 and 8 together to get 13, subtract 8 and 5 to get 3. And those are your kind of upper and lower limits of what your third side could be. Now, the third side could be a medium one and be anywhere in between. All right, but... Our third side is going to be anywhere between 13 and 3. And if it's going to be a whole number, well, how many whole numbers are in between 3 and 13? So for that first question, well, you got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that was 9. Nine triangles if we had whole numbers for the third side. But what if it, it could be a decimal? What if it could be 3.1, 3.156, and all that? How many are those going to be? Well, there would be infinite in number, right? So I put that's the infinity symbol. That's if it can be just any positive number, right? All right. So it's good to think about what actually makes up a triangle because we don't want to be dealing with things that don't make sense. Okay, so let's do a proof, shall we? So we are given in this diagram that RT and RS are congruent. We're trying to prove that UV plus VS is greater than UT. All right, so do you notice how they're giving... We have to prove this inequality, and this inequality looks very similar to the triangle inequality. However, UT is not part of that triangle of UV and VS. Okay, so let's think about, let's get our plan going. All right, UV and VS, that has to be bigger than which side? Yeah, it has to be bigger than US, okay? And how does US relate to UT? Well, parts of... U.S. Um, are congruent to this part, right? And then the other part of U.S. is part of this triangle. Okay, so these two sides have to be bigger than the U.T. So we're going to use the triangle inequality theorem a couple times and then do some substitution here and there. All right, so given R.T. is equal to R.S., 
Then we said we're going to use our triangle inequality for that bigger triangle. So that means UV plus VS is greater than US. So you see how we're using that theorem as our reason. And then we said, how does US relate to the other one? Well, if we do the two segments that make up US, that's UR plus RS. That's the segment addition postulate. Ooh. It's really a postulate. Let's make that postulate. All right. And then we also said that if we do a little substitution, right, here's what I'm substituting. Instead of US, I'm replacing uh, UR plus RS in that. So all that did was get replaced. Okay, so that's just substitution. And that's okay to do with inequalities. Okay, and then what did I do there? Well, I took this RS and replaced it with RT. Why can I do that? Well, we said in the given that those are equal to each other. Okay. And then we also said that in that smaller triangle that you are, let's go back up here, that you are this one plus RT, those two when added together have to be bigger than that third side. That's again the triangle inequality theorem. So how are we going to get to that last proof statement? Well, look at what we have here. It's like a transitive property. I have UR plus RT and UR plus RT. All right, so if UV plus VS is bigger than UR and RT, and UR and RT is bigger than UT, then we have our final statement. UV plus VS has to be greater than UT. That's our transitive property. All right, so there you go. Our first proof of this unit, you can do it. We'll do some more later.